Welcome to Unit 2. In this unit, you'll learn what demography is, how geographers study population, and how it affects you. We will analyze the distribution of human population at different scales, from global to local. We will look at trends in population growth and decline over time, and space, based on trends in fertility, mortality, and migration. We will study how access to education and healthcare slows fertility rates in different parts of the world and its effects on overall global population. In our study of migration, we will look at major historical migrations of our world and current migration debates, including barriers to movement, push and pull factors like environmental disasters and war, refugee status, and the economic, social, and political consequences of movement in our time. We have with us today Dr. David Walalu, an international security lecturer, regular contributor to Huffington Post, and author of The Ambiguous Foreign Policy of the United States Towards the Muslim World, More Than a Handshake, and forthcoming book, Volatile State, Iran in the Nuclear Age. Welcome, Dr. Walalu. Thank you for having me. Can you talk about some of the major challenges in immigration today? Well, international migration is, is, is a hot topic. As a matter of fact, it became a political one for many countries. And you don't have to look far to see what's taking place in Europe, for example, or even in our borders. So, but let's start at, at least with defining what are the reasons for why people move out of their country to another one. There are, of course, economic reasons. Uh, most of the refugees and immigrants want to sort of improve their living conditions for themselves, for their families. Uh, also, there are political reasons as to the climate, how what's taking place in countries. For example, now what's taking place in Syria, you got about 2 million refugees with no places to go. Europe can only take so much, or so many for that matter. You get uh, uh, kids, they are not going to school because there is no infrastructure for that. Also, you look at, for example, in Africa, migrants cross the Mediterranean, so many died. When, when crossing, everybody is kind of looking for ways to improve themselves and they want to get out of their environments for a better life. So the demographic and the changes within the structure, internal structure within governments or, or, or countries for that matter, is part of what's pushing this migration issue to the forefront. Now where the challenge is, is for countries how they deal with it. Because as you, as you know, for us in America, in the United States, the, uh, the immigration issue has become a, a political football. I mean, how many times have we heard, well, we're going to have to resolve the issue? We never did. But also because some of policymakers understand the importance of migrations, the importance of having immigrants. I happen to be one. You know, when I uh, immigrated to the United States back in 1990, um, while I'm talking about immigrants, and I'm talking from my own experience also, there are some challenges that immigrants face in a new or their adopted country. One of them has to do with ability to speak the language. We'll take the case of the United States, for example. When somebody migrates to the United States, he or she will be faced with the challenge of learning English language. I went through the same. I didn't speak a word of English when I came first time. But I realized if I am to function in this society, if I am to become productive, if I am to assimilate, the first thing I need to do is to learn the English language, the proper language. And that in itself opened up the doors for me, employments, opportunities, contacts, friends, education at universities, employment in Washington, DC, uh, to the point I'm writing books in English language. It's because of that determination of you want to succeed in a country, you're going to have to learn the language of your adopted country. The second thing has to do with the ability to function within the society. What I mean by that is migrants usually face that challenge of how can I move from my country with the cultural setting that I have there to a new, my adopted country with a different setting altogether. Now, the one thing I've learned over the years not only based on my experience, but also conversation with immigrants is some are able to make that transition. Others are not. This best example is now 
uh, well documented in Europe, especially in Germany and France. The immigrants who come to France and Germany, they want to live in Germany and France, okay? okay? But they want to live with their own cultural setting, which doesn't work that way. You have to make that determination. If I am to immigrate in another country, am I able to assimilate? It's like for me here in America. I made that decision. Once I moved to the United States, I had to assimilate. I have to learn the laws of the land. I have to learn the traditions. I have to learn the culture and become an American in true sense of the word. Yes, I do have the culture from where I came from. That's there. But I live here. This is where I sleep. This is where I work. This is where I eat. This is where I converse with my fellow Americans. This is where I, that's where my life is. And this challenge is what immigrants are facing. The other one has to do with the monetary aspects of it. Migrants sometimes go through uh, hurdles for them to be able to reach their destinations. And that leads to one major question now that the UN is involved in has to do with human trafficking. I'm sure you've heard the increased numbers of human trafficking organizations that are involved in this. So, and that goes not only in, in borders here in Texas, uh, between the Mexico and Texas, and also in Europe, in the Mediterranean, in Africa, and even in Asia as well. Mm. I know that human trafficking is a, a very important topic that we explore a little bit in this unit. Um, another thing that we really need to pay attention to, especially in today's current events, is the refugee topics. Can you talk a little bit about why the debate over what the international community should do about refugees, why it's so heated, why there's so many different perspectives? That, that's a great question uh, because there is no answer to it yet. And, and, and policymakers, not only in the U.S., in other countries, are struggling to find the ways of even addressing the issue. But one thing we have to keep in mind is sometimes uh, in politics, you can always turn an issue into a political matter. That has to do with votes. It has to do with other issues. But sometimes we forget the human side of, of whatever we're dealing with in case of the refugees. Best example is Syria right now. No. I'm not suggesting or saying that, oh, we're going to accept all the refugees because there's risks involved in that. Security risks. I have to understand who's coming to my country. But also I have to understand that immigration is part of, it's, that's the result of globalization. The borders now are almost like gone in certain parts, especially in Europe. You, know, you take the example of uh, 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 Germany, for example, where the population of Germany is aging. So the German government is thinking the next 25, 30 years, how are they going to fund those retirees? So accepting refugees, especially the younger ones from Syria, at the age of four or five, maybe that's a smart idea to build them up, to acquire the language, to acquire the cultural understanding, the traditions, and so forth. Then they assimilate into society. By the time they age 18, 20, which is part of where they're going to start their productive years, they'll contribute to society. You look at the other, the positive side of it for, for us in the United States, what America will be without immigration? And you see at the same time how far we've gone with immigrants. Why? Because differences of opinions, that's where great ideas come from. I don't have to look like you. I don't have to think like you. But you and I, we still can communicate for the greater good of our country, how to move it forward. So it becomes a topic because you get certain political parties, sometimes they're just trying to uh, use the issue of uh, refugees, even though it shouldn't be politicized. We look at the human impact that it has on. You think of those children, for example, now in Syria, which they will be traumatized forever. And when a country that has the the resources and the power to intervene, assuming that our interests also are taken into consideration, we should do so. So that's why it became political, more so than a humanitarian issue. Yeah. I like the way you brought up the human perspective because as human geographers, that's what we're really looking at. We can recognize the social, political, economic, but we want to recognize overall we're all humans. And so yes. what can we do to operate from that perspective? So 
Um, the students who are taking this course, they're going to be learning about demography. Mm -hmm. So as a, a professor, what is something that you think is most important for students to take away from this course in relation to their understanding of demography? Well, again, that's another great question. For that. Why? Because the students, within the next five or ten years, they're going to be in a professional setting. They're going to be contributing to not only their own well-being, but the, uh, the, the well-being of the community and the countries, wherever they might be. So they have to have an understanding of how other people from other cultures think. Take, for example, if you and I would go to China, for example, to do business, we're going to have to have an understanding of how the Chinese think. Same thing for the students. They have to understand that globalization has opened up the path for movements of people. You're going to interact one way or the other because the world, it's not us here, them over there. Not anymore. Not anymore. You see, for example, on Facebook, you put something, within a minute, it's around the world. Mm -hmm. Twitter, within a minute, it's around the world. Same thing with understanding demographics. People move around. Also, because we're growing as a population around the world, that's 7 billion, you will expect movements from one country to the next. The question has always been is for the students to understand what their role is going to be, how they're going to impact that issue of demographic movement, the population movements around the world. And they can play a positive role into impacting that direction by acquiring the necessary information, which will be basically based on understanding the impact of immigration on a global level. Thank you so much. That reminds me, my son got his first paycheck ever on Friday. And we were looking at the breakdown and he said, well, you know, I make so many dollars an hour, how come that's not shown? And I said, well, they're taking out for social security. Well, what's that? I said, well, that pays into the security of elderly people so that we don't have them homeless on the streets when they can't take care of themselves. And we have that type of infrastructure in place in our country. And he said, that's cool and just went on. Like he didn't say, oh no, you know, that yeah. took money out. But um, so I, I think that those are some of the things that we may take for granted in a developed country and um, be aware of how as demographic momentum moves through the, and we look at population pyramids, as the younger people get older, um, they're in that working cohort and they support the very young and the very old yeah. and how the, it's different in different countries mm -hmm. and cultures. That's correct. If I may just add one yeah. quick point to this one, because you remind me of when you mentioned about the the, uh, the, your, your son. Uh, I look at, uh, for example, Germany, Japan, Italy, and France, and Australia for that matter, even Canada to a degree. Their, their population is aging. Mm -hmm. We don't have that issue here in the United States because we are a land of immigrants, mm -hmm. and also because we have a healthy immigration here. Yes, we have our own struggles with the illegals and so forth, and, and that stuff can be resolved if there is a will to do that. But at least from an economic perspective, we don't foresee problems like what Japan does, what Germany does, what Italy does, and France, and Australia, and even Canada. Recently, Canada now is opening up their immigration process unbelievably. Mm -hmm. I never thought Canada would do that. Why? Because they are realizing that at some point in the next 15 years, if they don't build that segment of society that will pay taxes, that will provide funding for the retired, they're going to run into some serious financial problems. So at least for us in the United States, we don't have that issue. And this is one thing students need to learn, that the importance of demography, or the, or the migration for that matter, is an impact on domestic, domestic policies for countries, whatever that country might be. Thank you so much. My and, pleasure. <laughs> and we'll see Dr. Walalu later in Unit 4. Thank you, students, and enjoy population and migration.